Hi everybody, my name is Dr. Amy Borgi and I'm going to be your instructor for this semester on Canvas in Guidance 507. And if you're here, I'm so happy to have you here with me because you're gonna have the best time. I know that a lot of you probably are not super excited about being here right now because um, being here means that you um, are in a situation that maybe isn't the best because this class is designed for students who are on academic probation or progress probation. So if that's not you, you're probably in the wrong spot, but if you're in the right spot, I'm happy to see you here. And this is why. This is a class that's going to change your life. You don't know it yet, but this is going to be a pivotal moment in your academic journey and in your life journey, because in this class, you're going to change if you decide to engage with the material. I can't make you do that, but if you really want to get back on track as a student, um, you're gonna have to change more than just the behaviors related to being a student. You're also gonna have to change the behaviors in your life because you can't just change one area of your life. You have to change all the areas. And that's what this class is about. It's about changing your life for the better. So what I do as an instructor is I give you tons of tools. So I'm gonna to throw tools at you. And some of them are study skills tools, but most of them are tools like how to better yourself, um, how to engage in self-reflection and figure out who you are, what you want, where you're going, what your goals are. And so this is a class like about you. And so the material is really easy. So like you don't wanna use AI for this class at all because you wanna answer these questions yourself. Um, you need to get to the bottom of why why did I end up here and what can I do next time to make that different so I just want you to know too I am not judging you okay I've been doing this a long time I've been at Chafee for as an adjunct instructor for it's been about 20 years I think this is I'm going into my 21st year right now as an instructor um, I also uh, right now I'm currently teaching fifth grade at an Armenian school so that's been really interesting and fun and that takes up a lot of my time so for that reason my availability is kind of you know different because I'm literally teaching um, children from 7 30 in the morning till probably four in the afternoon so I'm usually not available till after 4 30 p.m. if you need something if you do need something during the day the best way to get me get in touch with me is to text me so my phone number is 909-224-1204 again that's 909-224-1204 okay so I'm also available by, available by email but it takes me up to 48 hours to respond to emails. I'm just gonna be honest, I'm not always on my email. So that's Amy, A-M-Y, period, and then my last name, B is in boy, O, R, G is in girl, H is in Henry, and I, at chafee.edu. Amy, period, Borgi, at chafee.edu. And like every professor I think here is, it's their first name, period, last name, at chafee.edu. So in case you're wondering. So, um, those are the best ways to reach me. You can call me as well and leave a message, but it will take me probably with 24 hours to get back to you. Um, I don't really usually have time for phone calls while I'm at work. So um, during the day, if you do need me, the best way to reach me is via text. Do not be afraid to text me. You are not bothering me. I don't really care about your phone number. I, you can block it, whatever you need to do. Text me from a text app, it doesn't matter. I just need to communicate with people that way because it is the best way for you to actually reach me and I wanna be available to you. I have office hours this term, so um, let me tell you a little bit about the class real quick and then I'll tell you a little bit more about myself and like why I'm qualified to teach you and all of that stuff. So firstly, um, Canvas, you want to use the module view for my class. Um, don't use the home page and then click on week one, week two. You can get to stuff that way, but it's really tedious and it's unnecessary. So I've set the class up so if you go to modules view, you can see everything that's open in the class at once. And at the top, you'll see uh, the Zoom meetings. So the Zoom meetings are my office hours. I have a couple scheduled. I think I have two and a half office hours scheduled for this term because um, I'm only teaching 
I think, well, I'm teaching three classes. I don't know why I only got two and a half office hours, but we'll, um, we'll have two and a half office hours. I can meet with you outside of that. If you attend those office hours, I'm offering 15 points of extra credit this term for anybody that attends. And the way it works is you log in at the specified time. I think all of mine are either Monday or Wednesday from seven to eight or six to seven, somewhere in that neighborhood, because that's when I'm available. So um, if you can't make those times and you wanna meet with me, um, I won't be offering extra credit for you know meetings outside of the ones that are specified as my office hours. But if you do need to meet with me for any reason, I will make myself available and we will find a time that works for both of us. You if it's a weekend whatever it is like I want to be available to you and I want you to know I'm here um, and I want to be here for you and also after this class is over I'm still gonna be there for you so if you need something from me you can always text me or call me even if I don't work at Chafee anymore if you need something I'm here okay I want to be there for you um, and once you're in my fold you're part of my my flock I'm going to make sure that I get you the right to the right place or direct you in the right direction that you need to go at whatever point you're in in your life um, so a little bit of background about me. I'm a clinical psychologist. Um, I used to work as a therapist, but um, in, at different agencies, and I found that I didn't like it very much, and I preferred teaching, and so I stuck with teaching for quite a long time. Um, you'll find out more about me as you go on and watch some of the videos in the class, but um, I, I don't care about sharing of myself personally because I really don't have anything to hide and I, I'm very open, um, honest, and um, I'm not perfect. So I'm not trying to pretend to be some perfect person up here that knows everything. I don't. But I do have a pretty good idea about a lot of things, especially at this point because um, I'm in my 40s. I'm 46 and I am um, I'm still learning. I'm still growing. You guys teach me something every semester. And so even though I'm a teacher and I've been a teacher a long time, I understand that you never stop learning and you're always going to be learning. And so I'm continuing my process of learning, loving it, and wanting to show you how good that feels to be a continuous lifelong learner. And I hope that you decide that that's what you wanna do with your life as well, that you wanna always grow and learn and change. So as a result of taking this class, I hope that you will, will completely change your life. And I don't think that's far-fetched because most people that take the class and engage with the materials change their life, not just their student life, their entire life. This is a life changing class. And that's why I love teaching it because I'm seeing students who are kind of at a low, you know, you're coming in like, oh man, you know, I'm on academic probation, but you've chosen to be here. You have chosen to be here. That means that you care about yourself. You care what happens. You want to stay in school. You want to do what you need to do to be successful for yourself. And so um, I am so proud of you just for being here and signing up but what would make me even more proud is if you decided I'm gonna engage with these materials I'm gonna put my 100% into this I'm not gonna use AI to answer these questions I'm going to really think about who I am what I want and where I'm going and I'm going to write that stuff down so the homework in this class is so easy <laughs> it is so easy but it's 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 hard emotionally sometimes because we have to look at ourselves and say, well, what is it that I'm doing that I could be doing better at? And that means admitting the places where we're not doing so well. And so this class is going to make you look at what you're doing as a student. Like what kind of things are you good at as a student and what do you need to work on? I'm going to be throwing stuff at you, not like literally, but just throwing materials at you. I'll be like, here's a study skills tool. Here's a life tool. Here's something to help you with procrastination. Here's some stuff to help you overcome your fears here. This is for anxiety. Are you depressed? Here's some things about depression, you know, so I'm going to throw things at you and you're not going to be able to use them all. There's just too much. But what you should do is you should do all the assignments, interact with those assignments the best you can do the reading. We have two books for this class. We've got The Seven Habits of Highly Effective Teens. And a lot of people are like, well, why are we doing a teen book? Just trust me, the adult book was so boring and this is way more exciting to read. Same information, but um, easier to read, more fun to read. Um, it really applies to school, whereas The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People is more about work which we're not talking about, so um, this, the teens makes more sense. And then the Encore's book, this is the eighth edition. Please get the eighth edition, not any other edition. I chose the eighth edition because it's cheaper and better. Um, well, not better, but just it's cheaper. Um, the newer version is different. Um, if you do get the ninth edition, you could still use it, but you're gonna have to figure out the right page numbers. I do try to put things by chapter in our syllabus and also on Canvas, so you should be able to kind of figure it out. 
but um, but yeah I also really recommend the online book so because um, you know it's just more convenient excuse me while I drink some coffee here mm. I haven't had my coffee yet I'm still feeling pretty good though so let me explain some things about canvas that are kind of annoying and before I go on I need to say you need to watch this video all the way through because it has all the important information that you need to be successful in the class the first thing that you um, that you need to do um, to be successful in the class actually to stay in the class because if you don't do this I'm probably gonna drop you um, I, in fact I know I'm gonna drop you so I will drop you if you do not do this one thing for me so listen carefully I need you to go into the module view you'll see the zoom meetings then you'll see success and activities which are extra credit and then you'll see um, course introduction which has a lot of information in it that you need to watch and then you'll see week one in week one is an assignment called the syllabus contract the syllabus contract is a contract that says that you understand that uh, this class is not like other classes and that we're going to be talking about really personal in-depth information that needs to stay what we call confidential between us so what we talk about in this class it's like what happens in vegas like it stays in vegas well what happens in this class stays in this class and we're not going to go talking to our friends about what we're talking about in this class because we want to feel safe to share um, you know, some of the things that are more personal about where we made mistakes. Um, maybe some people, you know, are using substances and they need to talk about that. Maybe people are depressed. Maybe people have, you know, suicidal thoughts. Yeah. Okay. Some people bring up some really deep issues in this class because we're talking about reasons why we're not doing so well and where we went wrong and we have to look at ourselves deeply. And by doing that, we have to share those things. Um, in order to process them better and get feedback and so getting feedback on stuff like that's really personal and deep we need to feel safe to do that so everybody needs to sign the syllabus contract now I do use materials that have um, curse words in them because some of my students actually cuss I, yeah, I know it's hard to believe that Chafee College students would do such a thing but sometimes they use some foul language in the course materials and so I cannot protect you from that like People do use bad words. Um, sometimes I do, um, when I get really excited about something, I might say, you know, I might drop an F-bomb because I'm really excited about it. But because it's an online class, like you probably won't hear too much, but if this was an in-person class, like stuff might slip out. So it's just like a little disclaimer. Like, there might be curse words. And if that offends you, maybe this might not be the right place for you. I don't know. There are other sections of this class if for some reason you feel like you don't want to sign that syllabus contract you'd rather take another section of the class that doesn't have something like that that's cool i think actually though I, it might not be there might not be another class available that doesn't have a contract because i think um kimberly hurst is one of our other instructors and she also does the, the contract i don't know who else is teaching this this semester it might be just us so anyway sign the syllabus contract if you do not sign it um and let's say because the due date is next monday so Every time you see something in the syllabus or in Canvas that's presented, like let's say it's presented in week one, then it's due on the following Monday by 11.59 p.m. I have a very strict due date policy, so you must get your work in on time. If your work is not in before the Canvas deadline for any reason, doesn't matter if your computer is glitching out, doesn't ma it does not matter what the reason, you will not be able to turn it in late. Um, actually, there's two reasons if you could. If you had a doctor's note that spanned the entire week or you were doing jury duty or I guess if you were incarcerated, like some kind of trouble with the law and you could prove that that's where you were, then I will let you turn in the work late as long as you have that excuse ready to go. Um, if you're you're sick and you have a doctor's note for that whole week or a doctor's note for your children, um, stepkids count in my opinion, um, but spouses and other family members, not so much. So if you're sick or your children are sick and you have that as an excuse i'll take work, late work but the reason is i give you a whole week to do the work i'm not one of those instructors where there's like there's a discussion post due wednesday there's a discussion post due friday and there's a you know no it's all due monday so you have from monday to monday to do it so that means in discussions a lot of times even if you work ahead of time you might have to go back in on monday and like make responses because there might not be people to respond to if you do it on thursday but my goal for you and for myself too, is to try to get our work done by Friday. For me, that might be impossible this semester because I'm doing a lot. I'm actually, I told you I'm teaching fifth grade. 
and also teaching, but I'm also taking a class to get my special ed credential. I've been working on that for a while. And so um, I also am taking a class where I have to write like three 10 page papers a week. So I don't want to hear any complaints about <laughs> how much work we have because you know what, this work is really easy. You don't have to write 10 page papers a week, ten, three 10 page papers a week. I literally have to write three 10 page papers a week for my class. So I'm kind of busy during the week, but um, I am trying to make a commitment to get as much as I can done before Friday so I can have more time on the weekend to have fun. And that's what I want for you guys is I want you to try to do all the work for this class and your other classes by Friday. All right, we're going to be talking about things like overloading yourself, which I've totally done this term. Um, I'm doing way too much stuff. And when you have too much going on, things start falling through the cracks and you really need a system of self-management. And so in addition to purchasing your books, you also have to buy a day planner. So I have this lovely day planner here. Um, this is a weekly day planner. And what I want is a daily or weekly day planner. So this one I would write in, you know, the dates for each week. So this is like a universal, like you can use it any year, any time. I can just write in dates and do what I want to do. You can get whatever you want, but as long as it's a week or a day on each page, that's good. What I don't want is for you to get a month on the two pages because those monthly ones just don't give you enough space to write everything that I'm going to be asking you to write. Now, this you will have you'll turn in these books as your one of your first assignments in the class. So you'll have a picture of yourself holding up the books like this. Or if you have an online book, because I do recommend getting the online book. So if you have online books, you just take a picture of a page in the middle of the book, not the beginning where the, you know, because anybody can get that online. So I want actual proof or I want actual proof that you bought the book. So take a picture from the middle of the book somewhere and post that in that assignment. Uh, you can also post receipts. So if you purchase the book, but it hasn't come yet, then go ahead and just put the receipt up in that assignment. That's absolutely fine. So one thing you should know about Canvas when you're turning in assignments and you need to upload photos or even um, documents, you have to put everything in the queue first and then upload everything at once. Because if let's say you put, okay, I, put my, I have a picture of my day planner receipt and I put that in. If I then upload it and it's down the assignment, if I go to upload the picture of the book, that will bump this one out. So you have to put this one in and then choose another and add that one and then choose another and add that one and then upload them at the same time. I do have a video on this, how to turn in assignments in Canvas. If you've never turned in assignments on Canvas, I really strongly recommend that you watch that video. It's available in the course introduction and also again in week one. So it's a rep repeated video for a reason. Um, it shows how to upload assignments in another class, like from a couple years ago, but the, but the information's the same, so watch that video. Now, this semester, or this term, because this is a 14-week class, um, I'm going to be um, revamping some of my videos because um, some of my videos are older now and they're long, and I'm pretty long-winded, I like to talk, and so one goal that I have for myself this term is that I'm going to review the videos that I would like to I guess make a shorter, more concise, more succinct video with um, just only the key most important points and less me talking about my whatever background stuff. So I will leave the old videos up because I do feel that the reason I've left them up for so long is because if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? So I actually feel like I nailed a lot of those videos. Like everything that I said was so good and so relevant. And I look back at them and I'm like, dang, old me really knows my stuff. A new me, I'm sure I could do a good job, but why would I even attempt to do it better than old me did? Because old me just nailed that. But I'm feeling like evolving this term and we're going to be talking about evolution in just a moment. But since I'm evolving, I thought, you know what, it's a good challenge for me to create shorter videos for my students that just cover only the main points. So then you have the option, I can watch the shorter video, or if I want more information after watching the short video, or maybe I even just want to go straight to the long video, um, you can watch the longer video. The longer videos have a lot more of my personal information and them, like, you know, just me talking about like how I relate to these particular concepts and using my own life as an example. Um, some people prefer that sort of thing. They want to connect with me in that way. They want to hear about my journey. Um, others are like, just give me the information lady. I just, I have, I have stuff to do. So for you, this term, 
I am on it. And I'm not going to be able to redo every single video in the class, of course, because there's so many. But um, I'm going to pick and choose the ones that I feel would be most impactful. And I'm going to do a short, approximately 15 minute video for you. Um, so that's my plan. Let's hope that works out, but I'm going to try my best. Okay, I'm going to do it. I am. Okay, so next. Um, I've gone over, oh, extra credit. So this is a big deal. So I don't take late assignments. You already know that, right? And I'm pretty strict about it. So like if you tell me, oh, you know, this and that happened, I'm just gonna be like, sorry, you had a deadline. And the reason why is because I want you to start getting used to meeting deadlines and not being able to just make excuses and get away with getting extra time because a lot of people have used that with this class we have a lot of people who are used to manipulating to get their way or I should say negotiating to get their way manipulating is a strong word but anyway um, I don't deal with that stuff I just say sorry you're past the deadline but what you can do is extra credit I have a lot of extra credit options available for you. I think I've got about 300 points of extra credit this term, and I believe we have about 1,600 points in the class. So, you know, 300 points is a lot of leeway. Um, you can attend Success Center workshops. The Success Center workshops have their own module. Um, so at the very top of the modules view, you'll see the Zoom meetings, the office hours, and then the next one is Extra Credit Success Center. So I will be posting the Success Center activities um, there how to get into the success center activity and then um, when I think the first one is mindset so mindset is offered right now so you can start taking it right now I think it's offered for the next week and then it goes into um, the next one which is learning strategies and then time management there are set times and dates for those success center activities they are all online like I think they do have some in person but you could do them all online and you basically sign up through a program called Acudemia. And Acudemia is linked in that um, there's like a procedure how to access the assignments. You go into that, there's a schedule. The schedule, I would recommend not printing it out, but actually accessing it every time because they change workshops, they cancel them, they update them. Again, this is extra credit. You get 50 points of extra credit for each one of the workshops. There's three of them. So you could do three of them, but they're only offered at specific times and dates. And right now, like I said, mindset is the only one that's offered. And then next will be learning strategies. And then next will be time management. During this term, they will cycle again. So mindset will be offered again in the middle of the term and then uh, learning strategies and then time management. However, you're gonna run out of time and you're not gonna have time to do it if you wait. And so I strongly recommend that right now, just to get a good, you know, jump on the class, give yourself some insurance in case you do miss assignments, just to get that first success center done, success center mindset, get it done. You'll get 50 points of extra credit to start the class with, which is phenomenal. And so for those of you who are feeling, you know, pretty like, oh, okay, I'm ready to go. I want to do well this term. That's what you can do. You can go do that mindset workshop. Um, I feel like I have a hair on my lipstick, but okay. Um, so to get credit for the workshops, you don't have to do anything. You just have to go to the class and show up. But if you would like, if it makes you feel better, to upload the proof that you have completed that into the assignment, you can do that. Um, however, what happens is when the workshop closes, so for example, the mindset workshop is open for like another week. After that week is over, um, it'll take them about, I do have a, a hair stuck in my lipstick. This is very unfortunate. <laughs> anyway, um, I was saying that they will automatically email me a list of people who have completed the workshop and then I will update the grade at that time. I will not update the grade until I get that information from the Success Center because they're, they verify that you attended. If for some reason I see that you attended the workshop, like you uploaded like the proof that you uh, attended, but I don't see your name on the list, I'm gonna have to double check with the Success Center and make sure you actually attended. Because um, some people will send like the confirmation email, like, oh, look, I made the appointment, but that doesn't necessarily show me that you actually attended. So um, I need to make sure before I give you the extra credit points. So you get 50 points for each one of those. And in the syllabus, you'll see when they're offered because I think I have them in the syllabus, like they're offered this week. Um, but you have to go to that module in Canvas that says success in our activities and look at the schedule and then schedule an appointment. You have to have your student ID 
um, in order to attend the Success Center activities. So um, they do offer free student IDs in person if you go on Thursday. So if you go on Thursday to get a student ID to replace your old student ID, they'll replace it for free. Otherwise, there is a fee. I think it's like $12 or something like that to replace your student ID. You can do it online, and um, I think you just go to... Um, admissions and records has a link to do that so you would just go to Chafee's website and then go to admissions and records and then look for um, the replacement ID link and you send in a photo of yourself and put in your information and they'll mail it to you it takes a little bit though so if you want to get things done right away and you want that you want your student ID right away I would go in person on Thursday and get a free replacement okay so moving right along, we have some other some other Canvas things you need to know about. So Canvas times out after like 10 minutes. And so if you are working, like you're typing away, doing your job, and then the doorbell rings, you go get it, you come back and you think everything looks fine and you just keep working. But then when you go to press enter, it just, it disappears and you lose all your work. So a lot of people to kind of circumvent that, they just work in a like word processing program. Like I do most of my stuff in, Microsoft Word. Um, some people like to use Pages. Some people use Google Docs. All of those are fine, but the key is that you can save it and walk away. But with Canvas, there's really no way to like save an in-progress assignment and then go back to it and keep working. And it doesn't save it for you. It'll just time out. So that's something you should know uh, going in and just plan accordingly because I hate when people lose their work, and especially at the last minute, if you're working at the last minute. Please don't work at the last minute. Please try your best to try to work ahead of time that is the key to success in life is to do things ahead of time and if you wait to the last minute trust me something will always go wrong and mess up your entire life and don't think i'm perfect because i'm so not perfect and i mess up all the time nobody's perfect and in fact if you do say that i've messed up on something please let me know i do give people what we call miscellaneous extra credit points if they point out something in the class that uh, that i screwed up on that might be confusing to people and this is because i want to encourage you to let me know if something isn't right like if you see that an assignment date is wrong or that information's wrong or there's something that just doesn't make sense text me let me know again 909-224-1204 text me let me know. I'll give you a few extra credit points. When I say a few, it's like three to five points. But you know, every little bit counts. And plus, you're doing a good solid deed for everybody else. Because if you're confused, chances are other people are confused too. I know I make mistakes. I'm not going to get offended. In fact, I will be very grateful. Thank you so much for helping me with that. Because obviously, I made a mistake. Um, mistakes are fine. And actually, that's what we're going to learn in here is that we are none of us are perfect. We all make mistakes. And so that's why with you guys here, like I want you to know that I'm totally rooting for you, like 100% rooting for you to be successful. Everybody can get an A in this class. There's nothing that is standing in your way except for maybe yourself. So your past, it's in the past. I don't care what happened. I mean, unless it's relevant to like what you're doing now, which it isn't. It's not. Honestly, if you could just forget about the past and just focus on the lessons that you've taken from the past. So for example, like maybe I learned that like people aren't going to always be there for me because my dad left me when I was a little kid. Okay. But that was a long time ago. Do I need to constantly think about and focus on the fact that my dad left me or that I grew up without a dad? No. Um, but I did learn a lesson, which is that people are not always going to be in your life all the time. Like people come and go and that there's, you know, then that's okay. You know, so the lesson I took from that is that you might not always have those same people there for you or people that you think are going to be there might not be there. But um, do I need to sit there and ruminate and think about, oh my, I grew up without a dad and make myself sad all the time about it? Absolutely not. In fact, I should forget about that. Like, don't think about the past. Think about now. Like, where are you now? What are you doing now? And where are you headed? Because that's the important stuff. So if you find yourself thinking about the past a lot, uh, you may be just kind of keeping yourself in a negative state just by thinking negative thoughts about the past, which a lot of people do. So in this class, I'm going to ask you to stop doing that and start focusing on now and the future because guess what? Whatever you decide to do from here on out, is going to determine the rest of your life so all the stuff that happened before we don't have control over that anymore it's over and so focusing on it is pointless and a waste of time 
So let's not waste time. Let's focus on now. What can we do? How can we do well in this class to better ourselves and become better for the future? All right, so this class is going to cover things like study skills, but the real main point, the meat of the class, is about you becoming the best person that you can be by figuring out how to change any negative core beliefs that you might have about yourself. So core beliefs are how we feel about us. Like it's either good or bad. There's really no in between. It's either I feel good about myself and I deserve happiness, success, joy, love, all the good stuff, or I feel bad about myself. I'm not a good person. I don't deserve success. I deserve to fail and I'm going to um, make that happen. So you're either, you either feel good about yourself generally or not so good about yourself generally and so if you don't feel super good about yourself right now because you're focused on maybe the mistake you made or whatever um, I'm gonna show you how to shift yourself to where you're no longer feeling like you're not worthy of things and that you're you don't deserve them to feeling worthy and feeling like you do deserve success and happiness Okay, so let's talk about your first week in the class, the things that you need to do. So you need to watch the video on why you need a day planner and how to use it. I'm not gonna go over that here, but you'll take you'll use your day planner throughout the class. And I want you to buy one that you like. So it doesn't matter what kind it is, as long as the inside is a daily or weekly. So on the inside, it's either a week at a glance or day, day, you know, a day on each page, not a whole month on the two pages, just because you need a lot of space to write. I'm gonna ask you to write all of your assignments, not just for this class, but for all classes in your day planner and write when they're due, and then also make a to-do list for the week. And I actually don't have my to-do list. I'm gonna grab it really quick because I always have one going. I have a to-do list notebook. Um, these are kitties. And by the way, I'm moving. You should see, oh, see there's boxes in the background. I just moved. Um, I also had COVID over the break. And so I did not really get a break. I was just like sick with COVID and then I moved and then now I'm starting. Um, so it's been rough times over here, but you know, I'm feeling pretty good now and I feel pretty settled. I've just got a few more boxes to unpack. So anyway, I've got my to-do list here and I have, because I have several different things in my life that I'm working on. So this is my general to-do list. This is at the school I teach at, which is called Ararat Charter School. And then, um, down here I have, um, grading stuff that I need to do. So, um, I just always have a list going and so should you, and I'll teach you how to prioritize your list by the things that are most important and urgent. And we'll talk about that as we go through. But the important thing you need to know is that the day planner is not optional. You need to get the day planner because that is pivotal for your success. If you want to be successful, you need to learn how to organize yourself properly so you can get everything handled the way that it needs to get handled and know that even when you have a good organizational system that you still may mess up on stuff and that's okay you know nobody is perfect and no matter what the consequences are like let's say you turn in you, you try to turn an assignment it's late and didn't work out there's always something else you can do um, maybe not in this class but in life like it, there are lessons to be learned and things things other things that you can do so like if you for example get kicked out of chafee you could go to another school right um you could take a year off and come back because a lot of people don't realize like you you can take a year off from chafee and then come back and retake the class again a lot of times like if i agree to it and also the opening doors uh, agrees to it you can retake the class again um later too it's not a big deal so but i want you to try your best to be your best right now and do what you need to do to get through this class with a good grade and it's not hard to do but I do have a lot of assignments in the class. And even though like I, this semester, I actually shaved a lot of assignments out of the class. Like I was just like, you know what? I'm just gonna get rid of a lot of assignments. We're just gonna focus on what's really, really important. So I've got it down to a lot less assignments for you this term and the success in our activities used to be a requirement and now it is just extra credit. So you kind of have an easier version of the class than anybody's ever had. I don't know how it's gonna work out, but um, maybe it'll be for the better. But there are still a lot of assignments and the reason why is because the more assignments there are the more um, likely you are to be successful so that means like if there's two assignments and you miss one that's an f right but if you've got 20 assignments and you miss one then you know you're not it maybe you have an a minus now so the more assignments there are the more chances you have to be successful in the class um you want to look at the syllabus carefully because there is a page that goes over the point totals like how many points do you need to actually pass this class? 
So I'm going to let you look at that and you can see where you can get the points for, for assignments. So different assignments are worth different amounts of points. And so uh, you want to look over that and you want to decide which assignments you want to do. You can also sub in extra credit assignments for assignments that you don't like or that you find are tedious or because um, some people love journaling and other people like Ugh, journaling, you know, so you don't have to do an assignment. You can just sub in extra credit for it. That's how it works. And you might ask, why Why is that so, Dr. Borgi? Well, the answer is, I found that a lot of times um, students get a slow start in this class. So they begin the class and they're like, you know, they're not really doing what they're supposed to do, but they're watching the videos and reading the books, but they're not doing the assignments, we'll say. And then part of the way through the term, they it, like a light goes on and things start to click and they're like, oh my God, I'm sabotaging myself by not doing the work. I need to start doing the work. And then they start doing it and they really start turning it on. So the extra credit is there for that reason because sometimes it takes students a little bit of time to get cozy in the class and start really learning what they need to do and applying those concepts in a way that are helpful and that actually change their student behavior to where they're doing their work. So I try to set it up for your success and that's why it is the way it is. Um, I really strongly urge you to read Okay, because this is life-changing information. I, you can tell that this book has been used, loved, abused, snuggled, you know, there's stains from me eating and drinking coffee and like, this is a used book because I read it a million times, maybe not a million, but I probably read it a solid 20 times and every time I read it, I still get something out of it that is useful and helpful and, and, and helps me on my journey. And so read that book. But all the assignments are out of this book. So I would say if you're only going to read one of the books, read The Seven Habits and then um, skim this one. But the assignments are out of here, so you'll probably have to go back and read certain sections. Um, obviously, in a perfect world, you read both books, you know. And if you read both books, cool. Now, what I have in the syllabus and also in Canvas is um, information on how to do uh, text-to-speech and also speech-to-text. So you can use those tools to read and then also to produce assignments. So if you're the kind of person that hates typing or writing, uh, you could just use speech to text. It, I have um, the information in Canvas, I think in the course introduction and in the syllabus on how to um, on how to do that. So you it, whether you have a Mac or a PC, if you have Linux, I can't help you, I don't know, but you could probably look it up on Google. Um, using speech to text, meaning um, I talk into the computer and it just writes it for me and then I just have to go back and make sure I spell grammar, spelling and grammar check. Um, or um, I could have my books read to me by just pushing a command key. Um, I actually, um, on my computer, I have it set up to where I just push command S and it like starts talking. So um, I actually rely heavily on, um, on text to speech to read because I have ADHD. <laughs> and a lot of you guys probably have ADHD too. So um, if you have ADHD or ADHD like tendencies and you struggle to focus on reading, please try the um, text to speech software and have it read to you. I would recommend also reading along with it, but it helps you focus because you're hearing it and also reading it at the same time. So you're getting both your auditory and your vision at the same time. And somehow it helps. I also recommend using sensory tools. I don't know if I have any with me right now, just because I'm moving but that would be something that you just play with with your hands. And sometimes, you know, I actually give kids, like my fifth graders, I'll give them paper clips to play with, like a paper clips like this, and they'll just be sitting there playing with it while they're reading or doing whatever they're doing. Um, it's really silent, it doesn't disrupt anybody. Um, no one cares if you have paper clips in your hand, it's just whatever. Um, something to play with, something to keep your hands busy. Um, I also recommend using um, tools like uh, noise-canceling headphones um, and maybe putting on white noise, purple noise, black noise, um, or even like sound frequencies. Like there's a sound frequency, I think it's a 639 frequency that I listen to while I'm studying. You could just look it up on Google, just type in 639 frequency and put that in your headphones and try to study with that and see how that goes. Some people need complete silence for studying and if that's you, then find a quiet spot. But we're all different and that's the thing is that we're gonna learn about the way that we learn. They call that metacognition. So we're gonna be learning about how we learn best, what we need to do to adapt to whatever teaching style our teacher has because not every teacher is going to teach the same but it's our responsibility as students to learn from any teacher even if they don't teach to our learning style and so knowing what learning style you have is really 
imperative to being successful in college. And so we're going to cover that information. And also there's a success in our activity, the extra credit um, called learning styles or learning strategies. So check that out because you'll learn a lot about your particular learning style and how you will learn best. Okay. That's a lot of stuff. So this week we have a few assignments due. We've got the syllabus contract, which I told you, if you don't sign it, you're not gonna be able to stay in the class. If that assignment locks, like it's past the due date, you will need to contact me via text or phone in order to stay in the class. And I will be posting announcements on that. So announcement section, you need to make sure that you check the course announcements a couple times a week. I usually post in there on the weekends. Um, I'll post announcements, but sometimes throughout the week, I will let you know if there's a glitch in an assignment or if I'm canceling an assignment. Any changes to the syllabus or to the workload for the class is going to be in course announcements. You don't want to miss that because sometimes I cancel assignments. In fact, I might be doing that quite a bit this term. So I need you to make sure that you're checking the course announcements so you don't do assignments that um, I'm canceling, okay? So I may cancel assignments. And um, I may also be uh, giving you opportunities to earn extra credit in announcements. I will be reminding you of important deadlines, like drop deadlines, um, dates that you need to drop for, uh, drop before. So um, when it comes time for you know dropping the class or having to stay in the class, I will let you know. Um, I'll remind you of my office hours. Um, I'll actually put some inspirational stuff in there too. I, I do a lot of stuff in announcements. And announcements is the place where I am able to communicate with you throughout the term. That's the only place, okay? Um, well, actually, no, there's another place. So when you turn in an assignment, I actually do make comments on your assignments. And some of the assignments I really respond back to very personally. So like in journal assignments, so when you write a journal, um, I will actually read your journal and then I'll write a response to it. If you don't want me to read your journal, like you, you, it's really personal and it was just, ugh, just at the very top of that journal, can you just put like, please don't read this, it's really personal. Um, I will just check to make sure that you completed it and you did the correct amount of sentences, but I won't read it, okay? So you can write whatever you need to write and you can bet that I will follow the directions if you say don't read it, okay? But I do wanna read it and I do want to give you feedback if you want that feedback. So um, it's important that you go back and check your assignments after I grade them so you can get that feedback. Uh, because if you're doing something wrong, which many of you will, because uh, the big thing about this class is you must follow the instructions because there's really no way for me to grade um, the types of assignments we're doing in here other than did you follow directions or did you not follow directions? And so purposely, I have made the directions kind of complicated and long on some of the assignments because that's how a lot of instructors are. And so I'm trying to prepare you for college, basically, for college level assignments. You need to make sure when you do the assignments that you follow the instructions carefully. And I do switch things up. So like, for example, in discussions, we have at least one discussion each week where you will be posting something um, and then you'll go back and respond to other students' posts. This is where you and other students get a chance to interact and enjoy each other in the class. Um, you guys, I let you guys do that kind of on your own. I do look at those to make sure that nobody's being, you know, too out there um, or, you know, saying things that are rude or mean or whatever. But we need to respect each other in this class. That's one thing is like we, we have to have the utmost respect for everybody it is very, very important uh, because this needs to be a safe space for all of us to share. And that means, you know, I don't put up with racism, ageism, any type of ism like that. Like it's just not appropriate for this space. Um, I actually am what we call a multicultural competency specialist, meaning like I studied extensively about um, why diversity is important in um, not only the classroom, but just in any um, group interactions, in business workplaces, things like that. And it turns out that the more different somebody is than you, the more you have to learn from them. So remember that as you're going through this class, that if you see somebody that's really different than you and you're not sure about them, give it a chance, give that person a chance to show you and teach you because you have a lot to learn from people that are most different from you. And so um, that's kind of where I stand on that issue. And again, uh, any type of racism or sexism, ageism will not be tolerated. Um, I have never had to ask anybody to leave the class ever, not once, because everybody is always so respectful, and I know that you guys will be too, but I do have to say that stuff just so you know, and it's spelled out explicitly. 
none of that. Okay, what I do want to see is encouragement. Um, I want you to read each other's work and encourage each other, cheer each other on, be each other's support system as you go through this class because you're not alone. You're not the only person that is struggling with school right now. You're not the only person on academic probation. There's a lot of reasons why people end up here and some of them have nothing to do with your ability as a student. And I can guarantee you that if you're willing to put in the time and effort that any of you can be successful in college because it's not about how intelligent you are at all. It's about how hard you're willing to work. It's about how efficiently you work. You know, and so what I'm trying to teach you in here is how to efficiently schedule everything that you need to do and then efficiently get it done in a timely manner and set positive goals for yourself so you can be successful at those goals. So that's my main driving force in this class is teach you time management, how to manage yourself and teach you self-responsibility, take your responsibility for yourself. So, um, if you plan to stop taking the class for any reason, you need to drop the class in Canvas yourself. I will not be dropping anybody um, unless I'm dropping you for the syllabus contract, which you will get some warnings before I do that. But the reason I drop people for the syllabus contract is because I wanna make sure whoever's starting the class is actually engaged in the class. So if you just like enter the class, but then you don't do anything, I'm not gonna let you just sit there the whole semester. I'm gonna kick you out for your own good, right? It's not because I'm being mean, it's because I'm trying to help you. I don't want you to get an F because you just entered the class, checked it one time, and then sat there the rest of the term. Okay, so I'm, that's for you. But if you do plan on stopping taking the class, please take a moment and contact me first because a lot of times people look at their grade and they're like, oh my God, I'm getting a D right now. But it's like, well, we only have four or five assignments in, in so far and there's like 30 assignments. So um, at the end of the term, your grade's gonna be fine. So please check with me first to make sure that what you're seeing in Canvas, like if it's a D or an F or something, that, that, that you're still, you might still be in a position to pass is what I'm saying. The way I have the class set up, um, most people can save themselves. Um, you know, even if they screw up at the beginning, if you do nothing at the beginning, like you just didn't do anything, maybe you're, you're not going to be a position. But if you did some things and you just missed some important things, you might be in a position to still pass. So check with me first. We'll go over your grade. We'll look and see what your best possible grade could be in the class at the end. If you did everything you needed to do from that point on um, and you can make a decision about whether you want to stay or go, please don't just go without checking in. Um, but if you know for sure, for sure that you just can't take the class for whatever reason, just let me know and then drop the class. I will not be dropping you if you just say, hey, you know, I don't want to take the class anymore. Can you drop me? I'm going to say, no, I can't. Actually, after a certain point, you have to drop yourself. So you're the only person that can drop yourself after, I think, the second week of class. So after that second week, it's all you. And if you decide to not drop the class, but you, you don't do the work, you're going to get an F. And I don't want that for you. I really don't. I want everybody in here to pass and be successful and do everything that they can. So um, back to me. So why am I qualified to teach this class? Um, I don't know. I guess it's because I've been doing it for such a long time or maybe because I have a PhD in clinical psychology and I have a lot of background knowledge about psychology in general. Um, maybe it's because I really care about you and I want you to be successful and I know how to bring out the best and nurture people. I'm good at motivating people. Um, I hope to motivate you. I cannot make you do anything. I already know that. Only you can make yourself do stuff. And so this is like a call to action. So this is your chance to get back on track. And I hope you take it because coming into the class is the, was the first step. But now you have to do the work and the work is easy. It's just time consuming, meaning there's a lot of assignments because I want you to learn how to juggle a lot of stuff at once by using your day planner, by using a self-management system, by making to-do lists, by getting work done ahead of time. That is my primary aim and goal in this class. So this is the end of the video. And so if you stayed this long, I wanna reward you because I did tell you that if you didn't stay till the end that you might not pass the class, but, um, which is true because all this information is very important. Um, but if you made it to the end of this video, I would like you to leave a comment on the video on YouTube. So go to my YouTube page where this video is underneath, leave a comment. Make sure you uh, leave your name, like first and last name. Um, or at least your first name and your last initial so I can kind of figure out who I should be giving points to. But I'll be giving you 15 points of extra credit for leaving 
a comment on this video on YouTube. This is just for me to know that you actually watched the whole video to the end and you, um, you actually are getting those extra credit points because you did. So you're getting rewarded for doing that. Um, there's, I feel like there's other things I want to say to you. And I guess the biggest thing I'd like to say to you is that, um, I'm happy you're here and I can't wait to get to know you on a little more personal basis. And I can't wait for you to get to know me as well through the class and just know that um, I'm here for you for any reason. If you need anything along the way, please text me again, 909-224-1204. And I look forward to having you in the class. Oh, Heh. One more thing I forgot is, you know, I do that sometimes, but we have a course discussion this week called the meet and greet. Um, it, it's meet and greet for the class. And in it, you're going to be asked to create a version of yourself called you 2.0, meaning a, the better version of you. So if you could be the best version of yourself, who would you be? What skills would you have? What qualifications would you have? So I have a video on that, on how to create that U 2.0. And then you're going to present that U 2.0. You're going to draw a picture of yourself in your evolved form. So we I said we were going to talk about evolution. So like Pokemon evolution, as you interact with your trainer, your trainer interacts with you, you evolve your Pokemon into the next creature. That's what you're doing. You're going to evolve yourself. So if you were your fully evolved version of you, what qualities would you have? And so, for example, right now, I'm working on evolving myself in a lot of ways as well. And so I, my evolved version, would be a perfect time manager, meaning I would be just the boss of time management and like my list, I would get everything done. Nothing would fall through the cracks. I would be so on top of things that everything would be just done ahead of time. I wouldn't fall behind. So that would be my first superpower was that I, I'm like the best self-manager. Um, other superpowers that I have are empathy. So I am like the most empathetic person. I can put myself in other people's shoes. I can imagine what they feel like. I can give them the strength that they need to continue on. I'm a good listener. I'm like the most epic listener. I will just listen to you, talk about your problems. I will not interject with my own bullshit. I will give you 100% attention and respect. Um, I'm also just really good at being present in the moment and really focusing on the person in front of me or the things in front of me that make life so special. So those are the things that would be me, the evolved version, U2.0. These are things that I'm working on. Um, and lastly, I would be a very succinct and to the point um, lecturer, and I'm going to work on those 15 minute videos. So for me, that's my U2.0. You're gonna present your U2.0. Um, either in writing or in a video format. It's up to you which one you want to do. But that will be your first discussion post. Um, you will have homework right away in the book starting next week. So have your book, be ready. And remember, it's this book that we have the homework out of. This is a more expensive book. This one we don't have homework out of, but I really, 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 really want you to read it because it is life changing. And then you also need that day planner. So don't forget that. Okay, I think I'm done. Thank you so much for listening all the way to the end and I will see you in the next video. Bye.